Let's all stand. Let's worship the Lord a little while more, shall we? Wonderful things happen when we worship Him. If you go to the Gospels, you'll find that every time someone worship Him or they fall before Him, whether there's a leper, whether there's a blind man, when they worship Him, they always received. Always. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 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 There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. But there's something about that name. Lord Jesus, we Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name you're the master savior jesus like the fragrance after the rain we thank you that you are in our midst Lord even right now and we love you Lord we worship you all the galaxies and all the universes beyond our universe all the kingdoms not just of men principalities and powers and all your angels they bow before you king of all kings lord of all lords and every tongue will confess jesus christ is lord i thank you lord that every name is subject to the name that's above every name the name of jesus 
Lord, you have obtained a more excellent name from the Father. And now it's in this wonderful name, Lord Jesus, I come against every sickness in the house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and also beyond time and space in the other services of other times. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command that tumor to wither up and die and be flushed out of your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command every cancer cell to die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command that spirit of infirmity to loose your body and let you go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now just place your hand upon your area, wherever it is, your stomach, if your heart is causing you problems, you have a heart condition, place it on your heart, or else you can just place it on your head. And now, Father, let your healing flow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let it flow like a mighty tide in the name of Jesus, effecting a cure Effecting healing in the bodies that are afflicted, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is someone here, you've just been diagnosed with the beginning stage of dementia. The Lord says He's healing you. You need not be afraid nor fearful of your future. You will not get worse and worse. You will get better and better. Your family will notice it first and then the medical results will prove it out. Someone right now in this service you're experiencing that. And someone who has been experiencing that for some time, in another service right now, I see it in the Spirit. The Lord is healing you as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Again, all kinds of healings for back conditions. There is, I see the word C3 in your back. And the Lord is healing you right now. That pain is gone. Amen. Start moving that area of your back. Move your hand, move your shoulder, fill out for that pain, and find your enemy no more. Praise the Lord. Uh, both knees, someone is actually suffering from both knees, some sort of injury or pain, and you're experiencing it even right now when you bend in a certain way. It's causing you some sleepless nights and causing you some problems moving around. The Lord is healing you right now. You're feeling the warmth in those knees. Move your knees up and down, up and down in the name of Jesus and see what the Lord has done. All kinds of ACL condition also being healed. Knees condition in the name of Jesus. Move your knee right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And put it down again. Amen. Start doing what you cannot do before. Do not wait for me to call out your healing. You can move your neck, move your neck. You can move your elbow, move your elbow. You can move your shoulder. Move your shoulder right now in the presence of the Lord. Healing is here. Healing is flowing. Amen? But God always says, your faith has made you well. So you put your faith by your action as well. Amen? You believe it, you start acting like it. Jesus told a man who was withered in his hand, stretch forth. You don't tell someone to do that unless the person has faith, he will stretch forth. Act like you are healed and you will find yourself healed. Amen? Because the healing explosion will will happen when faith act is put into it. Amen? Someone's neck is being healed, literally. When I mentioned neck just now, I was illustrating, but right now the Lord is saying someone with a neck condition, when you move your neck, you can't move your neck all the way, you can do it now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Another neck condition being healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is someone with, uh, you've been diagnosed with a tumor, a certain tumor in your bone and as a result you are experiencing pain all the time and I want you to know right now that tumor is no more I see it dissolving I see it dissolving gone in Jesus name you are healed you are healed thank you Lord Jesus all kinds of uh, bone conditions being healed osteoporosis is now reversed in the name of Jesus the Lord will make your bones fat dense and strong in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Start doing what you cannot do before. Acid reflux. There's someone here, even uh, this, this past uh, uh, few days, you experience it uh, in, in a more increasing way. Acid reflux and the Lord is healing you. You're feeling warmth 
in your stomach right now in Jesus name amen thank you Lord thank you Lord for what you are doing in the house thank you Lord when I say the house includes everywhere that you're watching this right now in Jesus name amen where this is your church praise the Lord the Lord is healing everyone right now of all kinds of condition if you will just step out and receive it in Jesus name amen I believe it I believe, I believe that everyone that touched Jesus, even the hem of his garment, everyone, as many as touch him, were made whole. If you will just step out in faith, amen, step out and say, Lord, I receive my healing, my miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Another tumor healed in the name of Jesus. In fact, this is uh, something sinister about this tumor, but the Lord has healed you of this tumor in Jesus' name, amen. There is somebody with a growth in your mouth and you can feel it with your tongue, the growth. Feel it right now. The growth is gone in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord is also healing all kinds of tumor conditions, whether it's outside or inside your body. He's healing you right now. Now, people, I want you to look at your body right now. Amen. And start filling out for that growth. And start moving that area of your body that was afflicted just now and see what the Lord has done. Thank you, Lord. And if you know you are healed, the pain is no more. Start moving. Amen. Start doing. You do not know if you don't move, right? <laughs> Amen. If the pain is gone, then do a big wave like this. Okay? Do a big wave. Keep on waving. Keep on waving. The pastors are coming to you. Yep. Keep on waving. All right. All those here and as well as there are pastors there as well. Amen. In the upper deck as well as all those up. We're up, we're up there. I see you. You are so bright. Can you see every time I look up, the light is shining on my face. You'll be the first to, to be raptured. So I cannot see you all. So just wave. There are pastors there, okay? And when you wave, they'll find you. Okay? Keep on waving. Keep on waving. There's another one over here. Pastors, another lady over here. Appreciate you waving. Amen. If you wave, then they know that you are, you are there. Now, whenever you have a testimony, the Lord has done something, glorify Him. You know why? Then testimonies produce testimonies because other people's faith will be sparked because of your testimony. Amen? Blessings are contagious. Healing is contagious. Just like COVID, right? Right? What the devil does, God does better. Healing is contagious. Amen? When you share, it spreads. When you share, it spreads. Go ahead. Hi, Pastor. We have a sister over here who has been experiencing chronic neck pain for the past two months, feeling tight and she can't move now. Pain is gone and she can move. Praise the Lord. You can't move like that. It was really tight. I've actually been going through physiotherapy like twice a week for my body, including my neck. I was hospitalized two months ago for other conditions and when you're praying C3, my husband actually said C3 is your neck. I didn't know. And um, it just totally like loosened up and it doesn't hurt anymore. I had a migraine this morning and it didn't. Now it's gone. The migraine is gone as well. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's a pigeon. Since you're down there, there's a lady over here. Okay, anybody else? Just share. Let's hear what the Lord has done. Pastor, we have a sister here who has pain in her right elbow for the past few months. Every time she moves, there's pain. Now, there is no pain. It's gone. Wow, praise the Lord. So, was it you injured your elbow? I think it's through exercise and, and, and it was just... And you had that pain for... Some, yeah, for uh, many months. For many months. Yeah, and many when you move a certain angle, you feel the pain. Yes. So move it, move it, lift up and move it. Ah, praise the Lord. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen. Okay, the healing has begun. All right? For some people, they are immediately healed. The pain is gone. And for some people, the healing begins. Do you understand? What you need to do is to, to act healed. Don't, don't excuse yourself and don't start saying, oh, I guess I'm not healed just because you feel pain. We are, we are not moved by emotions. Amen. We are moved by the Word of God. Okay, any other testimony? There's one over Pastor, there. Go ahead. Pastor, yep. we have a brother here. He's doing his NS, and this week he fell, injured his neck, 
couldn't move his neck for the entire week, but as we were praying, he felt a warm on his neck and he's healed right now. Wow. You injured your neck? Uh, yes. I fell at Pulau Pawai, the stairs, hit first, and my, my fuel bag, which was quite heavy, fell on top of my neck and I sprained it. But after you pray, Pastor Prince, I have felt a warmth and my, I moved my neck and it's completely healed. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank God He saved you. He delivered you. Amen. By the way, is that your physical instructor beside you? Uh, no. He looks like one. <laughs> okay. Tell you what. I'm going to cut this short, okay? Because uh, of, I, I got a lot to share with you. Okay? So please write in, okay? We won't be taking any more testimonies uh, uh, for public um, sharing, but write in and then we can share in the future. Okay? So, it's, so I know that there are people on standby to share and all that, hands going down there, but uh, I look at the time and, and, and that's one of my challenges, okay? Uh, sometimes I want to share so much, but uh, I find that well, when I minister in the Spirit, I don't have much time after that. So I'm going to teach you something because I feel that this is crucial. Amen? The Word. And listen, the Word is what heals permanently. You know, when you get healed like this, by the way, just a bit of teaching, what is happening here are the gifts of healings. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. And it moves as the Spirit wills. So sometimes if the Spirit doesn't move me, Right? I don't sense that, you know, that particular service, the Lord wants a ministry. Uh, he's he's going to minister in another way. He doesn't want the ministry of this, the, the, in that way through the gifts, He will minister in another way. But He will always minister. Okay? But it moves as the Spirit wills. I cannot just say, I want this person to be healed. I want that person to be healed. Alright? I'm not the boss. I'm not the Lord. Amen? He is the chief shepherd. So what we saw just now is the healing gifts. It's called gifts of healings. Amen. And usually, it's instantaneous. Usually, the full hundredfold is there. But if you live by that, just like the stirring of the water in the pool of Bethesda, if you live by that, you do not know when it's going to be stirred. Are you listening? Amen? But God's, God's number one way for us is, of course, to receive divine health so that you don't have to be sick. All right? But if you're sick, you can even receive from the Word of God. And I believe that even as the word goes forth afterwards, amen, you will receive your healing. All right? So that you will not be disappointed. Okay, a bit of teaching here. Can I have a good amen? From the word, you will always receive. But from the gifts of the Spirit, amen, all right, you do not know if you are the one or someone else. But the Spirit, there is a purpose for all these things, okay? We must do things God's way, amen. And all the people said, you may be seated. And that tells us the importance of the Word of God. The Word of God, the Bible. Can I have a good amen? Amen. amen. Our inheritance is healing. One of the inheritance that we have. We have so much inheritance. Of course, the very first thing we receive when we are born again is salvation, eternal life. Praise the Lord. What a gift in our inheritance. And the Bible doesn't say that we are heir apparent. You know what's an heir apparent? Someone waiting to receive the inheritance. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. So we receive the inheritance now. In any case, inheritance, heir apparent and all that, they wait until the person who has the inheritance passes on, right? And then they receive the inheritance. Jesus died. Amen. And He's risen again. Best of all, the, there's, there's no dispute in the family who gets what? Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, this uh, cake family and this cake family or this laksa family and this laksa family, uh, you know, uh, because the person passed away, the person in the center who can settle all the dispute passes on. So if only they can uh, resurrect the person and ask him, what do you think? Amen. Who has the original? Right? Amen. You can't do that. But with us, we can. We can tell the Lord, is this authentic? Is this original? Because He rose again from the dead. He's alive. Amen. Amen. He died. Thereby, thereby releasing the inheritance to all of us. Amen. And then He lives to teach us how to walk in it. 
always to remind us of our inheritance in Christ. Amen? And that's why the Bible says, uh, uh, this is how you shall possess the land when you call me Father. You know, there's a verse like this in the Old Testament. This is how you possess the land when you, and when you call me my Father. And that's why when, when, when you have the sense of sonship, amen, then you can afford to be a servant. And it's more glorious, more dignified, more noble that way. You see, when, when a prince that belongs to a royal family goes and serves, maybe like the mission field or, you know, um, uh, part of the medical team and he's, he's assisting, dispensing the medicine, helping the doctor and all that, but he's a prince from a royal family. Wow, we say, you know, there's dignity there. There, there is, there is uh, the mint of royalty even in his servanthood. But it's not a servile servanthood. Why? Because he's a prince. He's a prince first, then he becomes a servant. The way Jesus is, he is the prince of princes, the king of kings. And then he humbled himself and became a servant. Even the picture that we see in the upper room when he washed our feet. What a glory. Now, if a slave, if a real slave, if someone who is living in abject poverty, comes over and washes your feet. First of all, you suspect that he wants some tip, some money. Amen. When he washes your feet, right, it's the, the, the glory and the dignity is not there. Why? Because of who the person is. Right? You don't, you don't want to despise him, but you suspect his motive for washing your feet. Amen. But when a prince does that, and we know, of course, I'm not referring to physical princes that are subject to the fleshly uh, fall, all right? And uh, they, have, they have their own uh, idiosyncrasies and uh, lusts and things like that. But I'm talking about the King of kings and Lord of lords. In home is no sin. When he bows down and washes your feet. What glory. Amen. Amen? So, we are sons of God. You understand? The Bible says we are all kings and priests unto God. Imagine... Then only you can say, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you live your life as a servant. Amen. That's glorious. Amen. That's glorious. Amen. 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 Can I have a good amen? amen? Praise the Lord. So, we were talking about inheritance. And since last week, actually it's a continuation of last week as well, I was, this sermon, we talk about one particular tribe the tribe of Asher. And Asher means happiness. It's also blessedness. Bless. The word bless and happy is found in the word Asher. Sometimes when you find the word says, uh, blessed is so and so, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven, is the word Asher. Happy are those whose, whose sins are forgiven. Happy is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Is the word Asher. Whereas the the most common used word for in Hebrew for blessing is barak or baraka, which is a noun, right? But asher is also used for bless, but more of happy is the man, happy is the woman. Amen. Amen. So we saw the tribe of Asher and how because of their spiritual indolence and laziness, they did not possess their possessions. And one of their possessions, in fact, Joshua 18, Joshua actually rebuked them. Joshua a whole congregation of Israel assembled together at Shiloh. How many of you have been at Shiloh? It's a great place to be at, right? Amen. Of the beaten track. One day we shall go there again. Yeah. Amen. And uh, they set up tabernacle of congregation there and there remain among the children of Israel. There remain still seven tribes who have not yet received their inheritance. They have not yet received their inheritance. Seven more tribes. You see what... Uh, Joshua, their leader, told them. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go to possess the land? You know the word slack? Lazy. Your new King James says neglect. Is the Hebrew word rafah. Why are you lazy? Why are you neglecting? Why are you slack in possessing the land that is already yours? Seven more tribes. By the way, one of these tribes is the tribe of Get sorry, uh, the tribe of Asher, okay, which is the one we are talking about. If you drop down in chapter 19, 
talking about all the inheritance of, of these seven tribes that, that they're supposed to possess, the fifth lot came to uh, the tribe of Asher. And their border was all this, but also their border goes all the way, verse 28, even unto great Sidon. Can you see that? Unto great Sidon. And then verse 29, to the strong city Tyre. We covered that last week. Tyre and Sidon became like the New York, Paris, London of that day. Amen? Had they, had they possessed their inheritance, they would be in a position to uh, influence the nations of the world with the message of the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen? Not only to mention also the wealth that they will have, amen, in carrying out the purposes of this mission. Praise the Lord. But they lost it, and then the enemy took over all the way to the time of Alexander when Alexander destroyed Tyre, okay, because they refused to submit to him. And he laid a siege, a causeway all the way to a new, new tire from the old tire that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And he built a causeway just to destroy that city. That's how angry he was. All right? So, Sidon, Said, means fish, to hunt, to fish. All right? So, it's a, a, a place of fishes. Until today, it's still a place of fishermen. It's a coastal area. And to this area, our Lord came. And what is the prophecy of Asher that covers Tyre and Sidon? There are two prophecies in the Bible. Amen. And these prophecies apply to you as well. Because all the prophecies of the 12 sons of Jacob, every blessing spoken over them, belongs to you as a child of God. Why? Because the Bible says all the promises of God in Him, now in Christ, is yes and amen. amen. Because every one of their blessings is actually in Christ, the Messiah, who has yet to come. But He has come already for us. Amen. And He's our Lord and Savior. He's our shepherd. So in Him, all the promises of God, you don't have to uh, look at it, promise in, in the Old Testament, you say, Pastor, Psalms 91, is it, is it uh, uh, this protection psalm? Is it for us today? Is it for Christians? Or only for the Jews? No, it's for all of us who are born again. All of us who are sons of God. Amen? So all the promises of God in Christ is yes and amen. But what about the one? Uh, God satisfies our mouth so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Is that for us? Amen? The, the one that says that uh, we shall renew our strength. We will run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. We will still bring forth fruit in old age. We shall be full of life and sap, and we shall be evergreen. They shall be green. They shall be green. In the Hebrew, it says, they shall be ranen, green. The word ranen means green. Even in old age, where they are still bringing fruit, they are still green. Isn't it like the Bible says green? We think of brown as old, when the leaves become brown. You are always green. Like we say, evergreen heats. Amen? You are evergreen. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So these are your inheritance. Praise the name of Jesus. Any bad habit you have, do you realize how you get victory over that, that, that sin or that addiction or that habit? Do you know how? Not by working for it. Thanks be to God who gives. Amen. Who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's found in your inheritance. You see, a boy, compared to an employee of a company, of a very multi-billion dollar company of his father, when the time comes for his father to give the inheritance, amen, he will not give it to an employee. The employee is impeccable in his behavior and all that he has served the company with. But the son who is not perfect, the son who has uh, at times caused the, the father some heartache, is the one that he inherits. Why? Relationship. You are, you are the son of God. You understand? Amen? Jesus has died. The inheritance is now yours. So, inheritance includes victory over sin, includes holiness and overcoming life, life more abundant. We covered that. The mind of Christ, where he says, peace, I live with you. On the, in the upper room. 
Remember that? Peace, my peace. You, you saw me operating in peace. You never saw me panic at any time. Even when there was a storm in the Sea of Galilee, I was sleeping. Amen. That peace, that shalom, peace, I live with you. Amen. My peace, not somebody else's peace. Not David's or Isaiah. Good as they are, all right? It's my peace, my shalom. And the word shalom is not just peace of mind. It is well-being. It is wholeness. My wholeness and my peace I give to you. Amen. In fact, the word there is bequeath. I give to you. Not as the world gives. I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Now that's your part. If you want this peace to reign supreme in your heart, in your life, let not. I cannot let not for you. You must let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Your part is to take care of your heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Something happens, okay? Let not, you, that's your part. You can't control the situation. That means what? You control your heart and I will control the situation. You take care of your inside and I'll take care of your outside. That's what the Lord is saying. We are so concerned about trying to get this right, make sure our children pass their exams during this time, especially... Amen. Make sure we get that deal. Amen. Make sure of this. Make sure of that. You know how stress can kill you? I mean, when, you, when you're lying down and you're about to depart this life, right, you won't be thinking of, I missed that million dollar deal. I should have invested more. I should have invested in this, invested in that. You won't think of that. You will think of if you only had time, you will spend time with the ones that you love. You will enjoy what you have instead of trying to attain and attain and attain and then pull one side, pull one side, pull one side, pull one side. Never enjoying. Somebody else enjoys it. Huh? So the Lord gives you true prosperity. Amen. Not greedy. Always one more million, one more million, one more million. All right? No, no, no. That can, that can destroy you. Amen. And God loves you too much. So some of you wonder why. God, no problem with you. It's just your little thing. just stop. Oh, I become a multi-billionaire. Amen. No problem for you. Why, why you let all these other billionaires and all that? Why well, not me? I'm a, I'm a Christian one. Right? You ever thought of that way? Yeah. You know why? Because He loves you more. He loves you more because He knows that, that right now at this level, Okay, you don't even tithe. <laughs> right? Your 10%, wow, 10%. Uh. All you all want is my money, right? All the church want is, is, is people's money. You know, that's what they say outside there, the 10%. No, 10% is to show whether you love money or love God. That's what, how God ordained it. So 10% you cannot give to God. It was, uh, it was, uh, um, was it? Let me see the, Rockefeller, yes, Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller. He says that I will not be, be uh, able to tithe, I will not have been able to tithe on my first million had I not been able to tithe on my first dollar when he was a young boy. And he's a tither, by the way. Amen. The last part of his life, he gave a lot to churches for their mission work and things like that and charity and all that. John D. Rockefeller. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. Mr. Colgate, I don't have to tell you what product it is. <laughs> All right? He tithe. I mean, so tithing is to show that you are faithful. Whatever God gives, I remember you. Amen. Whatever you give, I remember you. Whatever you give, I remember you. Amen. Amen. That's it. Yeah. Don't have to argue. You don't want to tithe. I don't, I, it's like money making. The church is right. If you think so, don't tithe. Yep. Don't because it's not a revelation. No use. If you tie also, no use. It profits you nothing. All right? God wants you to have a revelation. Lord, I don't forget you. You're the first one. 10% goes to you. Now, which senior partner asked for 10%? But he says 10%. Okay? But some, people, some Christians say, well, what I have, oh, everything belongs to God. It's like a man telling his wife. The wife says, I just want you to spend at least one week uh, uninterrupted with me. Can or not? This darling, when I married you, don't understand. Uh, my whole life is yours. 
Does she buy it? Does she buy it? It's a wonderful excuse. All my money is the Lord. Amen? You see, uh, Pastor Prince, I throw all my money up, uh, all right, to God. If God doesn't want anything drop is mine. All right? So uh, there, are, there are people who, who cannot be trusted with more. Because the moment they have more, right, there goes their wife. Sayonara. Vaya candios. Hasta la vista. They find new model. And after that, they are not happy. And then I've seen people when they get especially sudden wealth, they change. Right? Mistake. They didn't change. It just brought out inside what they are. Money actually brings out what you are. If you are generous before that, you'll be generous. That's why when you are a tither, amen, you're able to give the first stand on something small, amen, then you're able to give on something big. Faithful to God all the way. And God, God bless us and bless us and bless us. You should read the experiment by, by Henry Ford, the one who created the automobile. Amen. He's a tither. He's a Christian, by the way. And uh, all these I mentioned are Christian, Colgate, Mr. Colgate, Mr. John D. Rockefeller, as well as uh, uh, Henry Ford. And Henry Ford had an experiment where he had a small field and he says the 10% of, I, I want to experiment to see tithing work on a field. And he had 10% of the, uh, the harvest given to a church. It was a small field, then given to a church of his choice. After that, from there, they start sowing again in another field. The, uh, and the field started increasing and increasing. And the harvest started growing and growing and growing. All right, I think you can read about it on YouTube. Okay, just here in like uh, Henry Ford and tithing. Uh, there's a whole experiment done there by Henry Ford. It just grew and grew and grew. And the whole field started growing. Amen. And bumper crop. And the 10% became more and more and more and more and more. So more churches were blessed. More missions were blessed. More charitable works were, 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 were blessed. Amen. Amen. So, so it's a matter of revelation. Do you see it or not? Do you understand, church? Amen. But some people, when they get money, straight away, they indulge in their lusts. Amen. They straight away, you don't see them in church anymore. Huh. Yeah. Amen. So God wants you safe. That's why I told you, God loves you more than a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I say it in human terms. Lah. God loves every one of us. But some of us, He loves special. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Can you, I, I can prove that to you from the Bible. Amen. When God protected the children of Israel, amen, He loved them more than Pharaoh. Meditate. <laughs> okay? Who was safe and who was not. All right? So, I like to be in the place where the Lord loves me. The best way. Amen. amen. So if you find that, Joseph Prince, you're not safe for this, you're not safe for that. Amen. So people want more and more, more blessings, you know. They want a bigger uh, 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 company to run. They want a, a, a bigger influence. They want a bigger church for ministers and all that. But you must always think, all right, the, the, the Lord will, will give you according to what He knows you'll be safe for. Because He loves you. Because He loves you. Amen. I function, my pastors know, like a small church pastor. I meet my leaders, love them, that's it. I won't spend time with people who are people of influence or whatever, or affluence or whatever. I spend time with these wonderful people. It's more fun to spend time with Pastor Mark <laughs> and my pastors and my leaders, you know, than to just, it's, it's just not me. I'm a, very, I'm, a, I'm a very shy person in public. Okay, if you see me, you'll find me shy and uh, I still am a shy person. Yeah. A pastor in the pulpit, in the pulpit is different. When anointing is there by the grace of God, Amen. amen. Now we want to, what's the first area that God said in order for you to possess the land? Joshua was the one we saw last week, right? Uh, Joshua 1. It says, um, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and the people. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon will be yours. 
I was telling you just now about the blessings of Asher, remember? The tribe of Asher is coastal site here, where Tyre and Sidon was there. And the father said, gather around before he died. And to the son Asher, he gave this prophecy. All right, the prophecy was, bread from Asher shall be rich and he shall yield royal dainties. So the word royal, give you the idea of a king. A king will come and eat and, and dispense, or rather dispense bread from Asher, which is rich. We saw that the only time this happened was Jesus went 130 miles to the area of Asher. At that time, literally, it's out of the proper area of Israel, where the Gentiles would live. Jesus went all the way. And along the 130 miles, there's no miracles recorded. There's no major act uh, noted for us. All the way back, is nothing major. The only thing is that he went all the way to minister to a Gentile woman to give her the children's bread, which means healing. We all know from the context there is healing. The fulfillment of, she was in the tribe of Asher. Why was Jesus went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and he gave her the children's bread. And how I know that this bread is so rich, bread from Asher shall be rich because a crumb drove the demon out of the daughter and the daughter was healed. Just a crumb. So when you take communion, remember this story. The blessing of Asher is in this. By your stripes, I am healed. Don't say, what is, wow, you know, you, you give me medicine if, if a, a very famous surgeon comes and specialist comes and give me some, some, some chemotherapy and some things like that, some big stuff, big loud sounds and all that, then, you know, but you, pastor, you give me a crumb. And your communion so small one. <laughs> Amen? All right? Those who know it have a revelation. God uses the small things to confound the mighty tumor. It will be gone. Amen? All right, weak things. Praise the Lord. Okay, so he came and yield royal dainties. Jesus gave royal bread, rich bread, and it's healing. So because we pray, give us this day our daily bread, the Word of God, yes, daily Rema Word of God. But it's more than that, because bread is also healing. We are just saying, give us our daily health. So people ask, oh, Pastor Prince, I, I take communion every time, what? You know, what they mean is once a week. But if you are sick, give us this day our daily bread. That means what? God wants you to depend on Him all the time. Amen. You know, people like this, I just want to take once and result already. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to keep on taking the kind of thing. When doctor says, take this three times a day, yes, sir. And then doctor take money from you. And it's more than 10%. Okay, and now this is more expensive. Okay, so uh, this is the blessing of his father Jacob upon his son before he was a tribe, before he became a tribe. Later on, fast forward, during the time when there are all 12 tribes already, it was Moses' turn to leave the world and Moses gathered them together and Moses... He gave all the blessings to the 12 tribes and this is a blessing on Asher. All right, Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favoured by his brothers. Let him dip his foot in oil. You walk in the spirit. Okay, that's the idea. Your sandals shall be iron and bronze as your day, so shall your strength be. Okay, look at me. Have you claimed that? This is your inheritance, you know. Read carefully. Read carefully. It doesn't say as your days you become weaker, but praise God, you'll see Jesus face to face. Right? It doesn't say that. It says, as your days, that means as your days increase, so shall your strength be. Amen. Do you see that? Now, I've, 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 I've meditated on this, I've read this many times, and the more I read it, the more I, 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 I check the different uh, uh, Bibles and all that, the NASB, the 95 uh, NASB 1995 version says this as your days are so shall your leisurely walk be right so the strength comes in your walking so, now pastor are you talking about physical walking both we saw that Asher will dip his foot in oil he'll be walking in the spirit 
So as your days, your spiritual strength gets stronger and stronger. But not just that. Let's not take away the physical side. Your shoes, talking about walking. Before that, let him dip his foot in oil. Walking, feet. Your shoes shall be iron and bronze. That means what? Every place you will take. Iron and bronze are really strong. All right? You will take. Every place the sole of your foot and this sole happened to be made of iron and bronze. Amen. 777 NC. NCC, 777. You know about that? It's a new brand. It's iron and bronze. Amen. When the Bible says the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet, oh, it's some crushing. All right? Crush like a cockroach. All right? So, it is iron and bronze. Amen? Nice tie, huh? 777. Seven, seven. Yeah. Five, five, five. Five, five, five sandals, lah, huh? Okay. <laughs> As your day, so shall your strength be. That means you, you, will, you will... It's the reverse of the natural process of the world. It's like God is saying to us, don't be worldly. Don't, don't be squeezed into the mold of the world. Don't think like the world. Think, think. It starts here, all right? As my days increase... Oh, oh no, I'm getting this to this age rate. I'm 70 years old. Oh no, I'm 75. Oh no, I'm 78. Oh no, you know? And you start thinking of people who passed away at this age and you know, different ones and all that. You start thinking old. And you start thinking, as my days, so shall my weakness be. And doctors, they are doing their best, okay? They go by the natural. They tell you, anything you tell them, once you're a certain age, right, you tell them you got this problem, they say, never mind, it's aging. Everyone goes through this. Right? Don't put up your hands. All right? We love doctors. <laughs> All right? They are fighting the same problem that, you know, God is also against. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But this verse is telling you to think different. As your days, so shall your strength be. Amen. That means what? As your days increase, your strength increase. Amen. Have you claimed it? Have you spoken it? Do you act like it? Amen. Start walking it out. Amen? Okay, so how do I possess the land? How do I possess? Go back to Joshua 1. It says here, Moses, my servant, is dead. Think about the big pair of shoes that Joshua will have to fill. Moses is dead. Now, bring these people, go over Jordan to the promised land. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. I have given, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon shall be yours. And then God encouraged him, I'll be with you wherever you go. And then God said these words, only be strong and very courageous. Amen? Only be strong and very courageous. What about you? Are you faced, sometimes you find that in the middle of the night, your heart beats real fast? I'm talking about someone here. Amen. A few someones. Amen. Your heart beats real fast. Or you start, you, you don't know why, but you find that you get anxious really fast. Amen. Is it panic attack? Recently, you know, the front news, headline news of Straits Times. I just passed by and I looked down in my house at the headlines, and I was stunned. One out of three youths have mental health challenges. And then the subtitle says, anxiety being the leading reason. And you talk about social media, its impact, cyberbullying, things like that. But we can teach our young people, amen, that Jesus has given us His peace. Let not, that's our part. Let not your heart be troubled. The more you start, let not your heart be troubled. Just quote it. Quote it to your heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Say it under your breath. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You know what's going to happen? More shalom will flow. Because shalom is there already. He has given us, He has bequeathed us His shalom, well-being and peace. So the more you let your, not your heart be troubled, the more well-being flows into your body. You know, there's a verse that says, a sound heart is the tree of life. Sorry, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. I'm, I'm quoting the King James. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. You know, the word sound is the word healing, marpe, from the word rafa. Marpe is the noun. A marpe heart is the life of the flesh. Then, you look carefully at marpe. It's also the, the Hebrew, when Hebrew says tranquility and peace, is marpe. A tranquil heart, a heart that is tranquil, is life to your body, Amen. life to the flesh. So, 
while people think that, what's the problem? Is it my diet? There's such a focus now, right, in the world uh, on diet being the key. And, and by the way, it has its place. Amen? I'm not it's saying go crazy. The Bible talks about sin of gluttony and your drinking, of course. Amen? Don't get drunk. The Bible says gluttony and drunkenness. The Bible talks a lot about it. Amen? God is against this. It's not against eating. Amen. So many times we think it is what we are eating that's defiling our body, our, our, ourselves. And the word defile, by the way, is not just referring to your spiritual state, okay? Or oh, you're defiled, you're no more holy. No, it's not just referring to that. Defile can mean, like for example, a leper is defiled, but he's physical. Leprosy is physical. Amen. So it's like dirty, something dirty comes out and manifests as a disease. It is first not supposed to be in your body. It is uncleanness in the sense, if you define it correctly. It's a disease. You're supposed to be at ease. Not be in disease. So, we think it's what we are eating. God is saying it's what's eating you. Amen. Jesus says, out of the heart of man comes adulteries, bitterness, anger, res resentment, all that. These are the things that defile a man. And what was he doing? He was answering the Pharisees that says, uh, you eat with, uh, you and the disciples eat with unwashed hands. You don't wash your hands, right? And Jesus answered, oh, they didn't say Jesus did it. They said the disciples did it. They did not say to Jesus. And Jesus answered, it's not what you eat. It's what comes out, it's what's eating you. In other words, what comes out of your heart that defiles you. Amen. Amen. What's the point? You've got, you got perfect diet. You, you go to the gym uh, every other day and uh, you're healthy and all that, but your heart is full of bitterness, revenge, anger. Amen? Amen. Or you're feeling guilty, anxious, worried. This is no, it's not a sound heart. Amen? Amen? So, God is saying, be very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Now, these are instructions on how to possess the land. Chapter 1 itself, from the onset, God advised Joshua, listen, every place you step will be yours. Even though I've given it to you, you have to lay claim on it. You have to possess your possessions. You have to inherit your inheritance. You gotta place your claim. Amen. And every place you place your claim, even though I have given it to you, it becomes actually yours when you lay a claim on it. Amen. Amen. So, there are places where they don't teach Jesus heals today. So you know what goes on in the church? People are, are, are finding freedom from sin and, and from uh, uh, powers of darkness. They are born again. They, they love the Lord. But they don't preach healing. You don't see the healing manifestation. Notice that. Amen. There are places where they preach healing and, 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 and um, um, they, don't, they don't preach prosperity, let's say. People get saved, people get healed, but people are not prospering. So it's always the knowledge first and then the claiming. You do not know what belongs to you. You do not know Jesus paid for it. You cannot claim it. Peace of mind. Amen. If you preach peace of mind, peace I live with you, people start experiencing it. They know it's theirs. Blood bought right. Okay, you got a blood bought right to be free from anxiety, worries, and cares. Amen. 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 It's a blood bought right. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Your boss is not your problem. Amen. That food is not the problem. Amen. Your mother in law is not the problem. <laughs> your heart is the problem. Guard your heart, for out of it are the forces and the issues of life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, instructions to possess the land. Then God says, only be strong and very courageous. And then comes verse 8. Wow. What has this got to do with possessing the land? Joshua 1, 8. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. This is all about possessing the land, you know. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, for then, for then, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success when you meditate on God's Word. 
day and night. Amen. Psalms 1, same thing. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Say the law of the Lord. I'm going to explain that. But his delight, his joy is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night again. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's not a tree just growing. It's planted. Someone who cares for that tree, planted. Planted means it's done by someone. To care. Care. The idea of caring for it. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf shall not wither. Aha, wither, brown. Your leaf will always be green. And I believe this refers to your health and your wholeness. To a good old age. His leaf shall not wither. You will not dry up. You will not be a samboy. Uh, you won't be a, a prune, a prune, a prune, a salty prune. And look at the last part. And whatever you do shall prosper. Amen. Whatever you do shall... This is greater than Midas touch. Midas touch, Midas wanted... Whatever I do becomes gold. All right, he touched everything. Everything he touched became gold. He was so happy. He's the richest man now. And his daughter came running to him and he helped his daughter and she became a gold. Golden girl. Amen. And he asked for that gift to be taken away from him. He realized the value of it, right? Because ours, whatever we touch prospers. That's why we lay hands on the sick. That's why Jesus touched the children. Amen. Jesus touched the buyer, the beer that was carrying, the stretcher that was carrying the, the boy who was dead at Nain. That's why we, Jacob blessed all his 12 sons by laying hands on them. Whatever you touch prospers. Literally, it's your touch as well. And you work, hands spe uh, spell work. Your occupation, your ministry, whatever you do prospers. Amen? So whatever God says, uh, don't limit it. If God says whatever, you didn't say some parts of it. Only the spiritual part of it. Whatever is whatever, okay? Amen? Amen? I believe my God. Amen. What about you? Whatever you do prospers. Amen. And the key, the only key it seems like is meditate. Meditate. The part you're supposed to do actively is meditate. Day and night. So take the verse, for example. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. John 14, verse 27. Okay? And all this is my meditation all these past years. So I take it, it began as a meditation. Peace I live with you. Before I ever taught on it, before I ever have a teaching called Live the Let Go Life, I meditate. All right? I take peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Is there a difference? I meditate on that. Peace I live with you. My peace is His peace. Amen. Not as the world give. What does that mean? Not as the world give. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Why is this put right in this verse here? Why? That's our part. So if I don't experience His peace, even though it's given to me, there's a blockage. It's my fear, allowing my heart to be troubled. I must let not, and then it flows. The peace and the well-being flows. So it comes from meditation. You meditate, you meditate. Whatever you're worried about, you're worried about old age, fear of old age, all right? Meditate on Psalms 92. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. By the way, I meditate in advanced years. Because the word down there is actually advanced years. A advanced years means advanced years. 100 years old is advanced years. But old age had the idea of old. Right? So old, it's actually old age, but old age doesn't mean you're old. Do you understand? Some songs are old, but they're evergreen. <laughs> so you can be evergreen, Amen. Okay, another thing I do is that when I hear good things, right, I always say, Amen. That means, Amen means so be it unto me. Amen. Because the Bible says, for all the promises, I didn't quote the whole thing, for all the promises of God in Him are yes and amen, amen. unto the glory of God by us. So by us means we do the amen. We are glorifying God because we are saying amen is actually the root word of 
emuna, which is faith in Hebrew. So God is glorified because I've just expressed faith. Amen. All right? Amen. Amen. So take a verse. If it's healing you want, meditate on healing scriptures. Listen to it day and night. Even when you're sleeping, play healing scriptures. Amen. Amen. Especially when you're going through something. You're going through something major. Or the devil keeps you awake at night. Might as well listen to healing scriptures. I got one also. You can listen to it on YouTube. But YouTube got, got a lot of apps. Like, I don't want the halfway you hear. Wow, one cha chambo again. You know, all of a sudden. Amen. Scary, you know. All of a sudden, Angie Baby appears with a song and all that or whatever, right? Meditate. Now, I told you just now that the word, to remember the word, his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord, as well as also Joshua 1 8, we saw that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. This book of the law. Pastor, you see, it tells you to meditate on the law. Now, here's where I think uh, uh, in times past, I didn't pause to, to share this, to teach this, but I think it's time for you to get this. Okay? This book of the law or the law of the Lord, the law, definite, the law of the Lord. Whenever we find the phrase, the law of the Lord or the book of the law, it can mean, listen carefully, all right? Always the law of the Lord, always. The, not, not can mean, it is. The law of the Lord is not the Ten Commandments. It is the entire Word of God. Okay? When you find the law, you must always know that it, it can mean three things. Torah in Hebrew. Torah means this. Listen. First of all, the Torah, the Lord, Torah can refer to the first five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay? You understand? English, we say Pentateuch. Or rather in the Greek, Pentateuch. Right? The first five books of Moses. Torah. This is a Torah. Do you understand? For example, Paul teaching in Galatians, Paul says, you that desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? Abraham had two sons. Now, he's not quoting the Ten Commandments. He's quoting the five books and specifically Genesis. He's referring to the Torah, the five books of Moses. Understand? Number two, Torah can mean instruction, just that, instruction. In Psalms 19, there's a beautiful um, a phrase that says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The law of the Lord here is instruction. Torah is instruction. Torah can mean instruction. That's all. You ask a Jew today, you ask any Jew, is Torah instruction? They'll tell you that. Amen. In fact, uh, the uh, Christian Standard Bible have this here. The instruction of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. We all know that it is the instruction of the gospel that converts us. The soul cannot be converted by the Ten Commandments. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law, no flesh is justified. So how can the law of the Lord convert the soul? Unless it's the instruction, it's the sermon, it's the preaching, it is the, the Word itself. So when the Bible says meditate on the law of the Lord, it doesn't always mean Ten Commandments. And the third, of course, is the law of Moses, which is the Ten Commandments and all that. So whenever we find the phrase, the law of the Lord, like this in Psalms 19. By the way, there's a song. You all know the song? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than go, yeah, than much fine go. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Uh, these verses are all there in, the, in Psalms 19. Okay? So the testimony of the Lord is perfect. How many agree the Word of God is perfect? So it, it, talking about the, the, the book of God, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Now like, let's go back to Joshua 1.8. It, the Lord is talking to Joshua and the Lord used this word, zen in Hebrew, zeh, or, or zeh, 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 sefer, book, zeh. 
There means this book of the law. What do you think Joshua was doing when God said, hey, this book of the law? Meditating day and night. What do you think he was doing? He was reading. He was reading the book for God to say, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate. And the word meditate here, as well as in Psalms, is matha. Find a verse that you like and the whole day, here and there, you know, um, traffic light, stop down there, say, what's the verse again? Peace I live with you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So don't let it be troubled. If you let it be troubled, you'll be afraid. It will lead to fear. But before fear comes, there's troubled heart. Okay. Let not... Um, okay. Then you start moving. Amen? <laughs> Amen. During break time at your work, meditate, meditate, meditate. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. What kind of tree is that? It's not found. In the world, it's not found. They, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Oh, there are a few. The palm tree. And the Bible is with palm tree. Wow. In fact, the whole context there says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Hmm. Interesting. Palm. Okay. It's your boss. Dreaming? Are you dreaming? <laughs> Amen. So, meditate. Meditate. You can't sleep at night. Day and night, right? Day and night. Meditate. Start taking the verse and lying down there, okay, la, if the devil wants me to stay awake, I'm going to meditate on God's Word. Trust me, you're getting rest as well. Yes. Amen. And you meditate. Peace I live with you. My peace. I can just see His peace permeating my entire being. Amen. Don't sleep right now. I'm just illustrating, church. Okay, ah, let not my heart be troubled. Take a deep breath. Ah, relax. Lord, you have given me your peace. Oh, I'm so loved. Amen. Don't Watch the news before you sleep. Okay? Whether it's on, on your phone or whatever, try not to read the news like you would drink caffeine or coffee, all right, before a certain time. All right? After that, you don't, you don't drink coffee anymore, right? Like my wife, you know, she, she, would, she would tell me, uh, like for me, I drink coffee, I can still sleep at night. But she cannot, right? She has a certain time, she says, no more caffeine. Are you like that? Huh? So the same thing for news. You know what I'm saying? If not, it will carry over. No? You find yourself having sleepless. Even though you're sleeping, you're not sleeping. Because of the news of, of this world. Okay? Meditate on good news. Peace I live with you. They shall be fat and green. My bones will not be osteoporosis subjected to... Uh, 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 it's, it's, it's not going to be brittle. It's going to be strong. They shall be full of sap. My bones are full of sap. And I'm evergreen. Green. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Matter on it day and night. Now, God says day and night. It's a constant. Right? Are you with me so far? Now, when you meditate on God's words, something's happened to you. Okay? And we look at a messianic prophecy. You want some more? Yes. Can I take? We should be a bit more time. Okay? Can? Yes. All right. Let me go to Psalms 119, okay? It says here, Oh, how I love your law. Now, again, it's not how I love your Ten Commandments, okay? I love your law. I love your word. Amen? Whether it's the word from five books of Moses or even the Psalms. And for us, it's even, we have the New Testament. Amen? It's all God's word. But David expresses it as, oh, How love I your law. How I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. And again, commandments also, like we have a commandment also. We have, right? First John says, and this is His commandment, that we believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Right? Don't forget, you must always translate all this into the New Testament, because you're not a child of the Old Covenant. You, through your word, or your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies. How many want to be wiser than your enemies? Yeah. Huh? Your enemies are out to get you. Okay? And we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I understand. Listen carefully. But the enemy uses sometimes people who are just against us. You know? I'm glad there are people not for me because it tells me that my ministry is safe. Jesus himself said, Woe to you if all men speak well of you. 
In Malay, you'll say, uh, some people, right? Mati mati, uh, they won't let you go on. All right? You can preach a perfect sermon, they will still go after you. All right? You know what it means or not? It's not a good confession, mati mati, actually. Leave, leave, they will still find you. They will, you know, it's like, it's like, no matter what you do, I'll be the first one to tell you I'm not perfect. Amen? The only one that's perfect is our Lord Jesus. Amen. If you leave the church because you find that the pastor is not perfect or the people are not perfect and all that, then don't enter into another church. Because once you go in, you become imperfect. <laughs> For sure. Don't, you know, so... Jesus says, woe to you if all men speak well of you. Don't look for popularity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you are, you are in the ministry, I can tell you this. Forget about all the likes and all that. Yeah. I don't really go to my you know, YouTube page and that kind of thing. I look for how, how many likes I have. Others tell me, do you know your, your, this one has reached this kind of thing and all that, or, or this uh, one million or whatever. I said, wow, it was a revelation to me. Sometimes I, I listen to my sermon, then I happen to see, then I happen to see. I, I don't go with that. In fact, our young people are going, looking at that and that's what the problem is, causing this anxiety. Yeah. Amen. Because I know what the Lord says. Woe to you if all men speak well of you. So please, criticize me. Okay? <laughs> it will do me good, my soul good. Amen. It will do my soul good. Praise God. And then I check, I check the scriptures and all that. It makes me more attentive to make sure that everything is accurate. Then I say, it's, it's, I'm cool, I'm cool. Amen? And never hate your critic. Love your critic. They improve you. <laughs> Amen? It's like, you know, sandpaper. They make you smooth. <laughs> Amen? Okay, praise the Lord. I'm just saying, like, I don't have to criticize unnecessarily like you, you know? <laughs> All right, Pastor Prince, you're asking for it. I, you laugh very loud, no, Lawrence. <laughs> my mic is picking up, so it's in the recording. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Okay, come on. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my... Medi Again, testimonies here is the... Word of God are my meditation. I have more understanding than my teachers. He did not say I have more knowledge than my teachers. I have more understanding. In other words, they know all the chapters and the verses, for example. I, I see the revelation of that chapter. I see it. I don't know why, but I see it. And sometimes the teachers that teach you, they don't see it. Now, it's a messianic psalm, of course, referring to our Lord Jesus. And especially at the age of, let's finish the next one. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies on my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Verse 99 is sakal in the Hebrew, which is the same word used by, um, in, in Joshua 1.8. It says, you shall have good success. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have sakal good success. So I have more understanding. So this word sakal is a wisdom that causes you to prosper. It is an instruction and insight that causes you to prosper, to make progress. Are you with me so far? Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Okay, people look up here. You know your, your Bible, right? It's uh, divided into Old Testament, New Testament. Now, Old Testament is written in Hebrew. Okay? New Testament is in Greek. But many, many years ago, even before Christ came, right, there was a group of 70 Jewish people that came together, amazing scholars. They are amazing scholars. And they wanted to produce, because after Alexander the Great and all that, English wasn't the, the uh, lingua franca, you know, the, the language of the day. It was Greek. All right? And uh, after the time of Alexander the Great, because he conquered so many areas and brought the language there. So they wanted a, a Bible that they can read. So the 70 elders, very smart people, very sharp, all right, and godly people, they came together and they produced the Greek version of the Old Testament. 
which is actually in Hebrew. It's called the Septuagint. Septuagint, all right? 70, the 70, name after the 70 elders. All right, so there's a Greek version of the Old Testament. Just like you know something. Why do I say that? Because it says, I have more understanding than all my teachers. I understand more than the ancients. So I, I understand more than all my teachers and also all my ancients, my elders. In the Greek, I'm going to tell you the Greek septuagint of these verses. Are you ready? I have more sunesis than all my teachers. I have more sunesis than all my ancient elders. Okay? Who is this speaking of? It's speaking of Jesus. But of course, that's the first application that I see here. It's a messianic application. When he was young, he met on God's Word. By the way, people think he, he was instant in his knowledge of the Bible, even though he wrote the Word. <laughs> no, he came as a man. He had to grow as a boy. The, the Bible says he increased in wisdom. Right? So, he had to meditate on God's Word day and night. We found his secret. So, in the word sunesis, now, sun means together. There is a two thing coming together. Sunesis means to put two and two together. You see something by putting two and two together. There are people who read the Bible, all right, and, and all they see, they can memorize it even, and all they see is the superficial reading of the Bible. But someone else comes along and they, they put two and two together. Oh, this means this. That means, this means, this verse is saying, that means we can, they're able to put two and two together. Sunesis. Sunesis. Get it? It's a branch of wisdom that God gives us. I want to bless you all with sunesis. Amen? Because I'm looking for it also. Every day. Amen. I'm going to pray the prayer because I'm standing in the office of your pastor. So at the end, we're going to pray that over you. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now, Jesus, at the age of 12, they found him at the temple. The parents found him at the temple. And uh, he was asking the doctors of the law, the most brilliant people of that day. Amen? These are like the professors in Jerusalem. Uh, professors of the law, the Word of God. And they, these are, they're also professors of education because education back then was in the temple. And they're very smart people. Very sharp. And Jesus was asking them questions. And then the Bible says, and all who heard Jesus were at age of 12 years old. They were astonished at His understanding and answers. And you know what is this word understanding? It's the word sunemi. Same word as the one we saw just now. I have more understanding than all my teachers. All right? Except that that one is in, in, in the verb form. This is in the noun. That one is in the noun, one is in the verb. But it's the same word. Sunemi, sunesis. Got it? But that tells us how he grew. Amen? And became, he began to see more and more. He see the scriptures. And, and the rabbis who know the Bible back to back, they saw it and they were amazed how you can put two and two together and say, this is it. Whoa! Have you been there before? I love to listen to Bible teachers, all right, of familiar passages, but they, they bring out things that, and, uh, how in the world do you see that? I want that. Hey man, hey, this kind of, once you get addicted to this, oh, I'm telling you, it's the best kind of addiction. Yeah, no, no, after, no bad effects. After, no bad after effects. It's like it, it gives you from glory to glory. Amen. You become a revelation addict. I'm hungry for revelation from the word. I'm gonna read this passage. I'm gonna break the code. You know that, that desire. That's how you should read the Bible. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the glory of kings to search it out. Amen. God, 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 actually purposely something hide things so that. It gives you the thrill of finding it. Amen. 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 You know who else has this tsunami? Put two and two together. You know who else has it? Joseph in the Bible. All right? No one could interpret Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. I have a dream. Pharaoh said. And this is my dream. And no one could interpret his dream. Nebuchadnezzar, on the other hand, had a dream also. I have a dream, and this is my dream. And I don't know what I dream. Forgot already. Right? Remember that? So Daniel had to come and remind him of what he dreamed. Whereas Pharaoh knew what he dreamed. All right? But he cannot interpret. He didn't have the sunesis. 
So when Joseph came, because Joseph was known to interpret dreams. By the way, let me just pause here and tell you something about dreams. Do you all dream? Dream. Do you dream, dream? When I want you, Wendy, in my arms. Okay, Wendy alone. I'm a one-woman man. I told her the other day, you're every woman in the world to me. I said, why would I want to go for someone else? You're every woman in the world, amen? It's not original, but it sure is good. <laughs> it's amazing that Joseph was summoned the dreams, and dreams sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, huh? sometimes it's your roti prata last night. <laughs> it's your, the pizza you ate last night, Amen? By the way, do you know that uh, some great breakthroughs, inventions, discoveries came through dreams? Do you know the law of relativity? Einstein. He was trying to figure it out. He's trying to figure it out. He couldn't. He fell asleep. One night when he slept, the law of relativity fell into place. He saw him, he saw a cow, just like Pharaoh. He saw cows. Einstein, he saw cows surrounded by electric fence. And the farmer was looking from another view. He was looking from another view. And the farmer says he cannot see what he sees. He said he sees something. Then he got up and he came up with a theory of relativity. Not everyone sees it the same way, depending on. So he, he came through a dream. You know your sewing machine? Your sewing machine came through a dream. The guy who invented the sewing machine, thank God for him, and all the women said, and now there's your soul. Uh. <laughs> you see, instead of what you sow, you will reap. For us, it is what we reap, you will sow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, he had a dream. <laughs> and he had a dream that he was in the jungle and he was captured by the cannibals. And... Uh, they put him in the pot and they were about to eat him up, you know, cook him and eat him up. Then he saw the cannibals were carrying spears, all of them. And the spear, the blade, by the way, yeah, you know, when, when cannibals ask you, right, <laughs> what is your name? Don't give your name. You know why? They want it for the menu. <laughs> Lame, Pastor. Okay, anyway. Uh, so he had a dream, he was captured by the cannibals, and the cannibals had this spear with a blade at the end, but instead of, right at the end, instead of a complete blade, it had a hole. It had a hole. So his mistake was that he was trying to create a, 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 a sewing machine at the edge of the blade. He got the idea, put a hole in between. He could thread the thread in. That's how you, the sewing machine was, was done, manufactured. The periodic table of the elements, you know, the periodic, periodic, periodic table, all right, came in a dream. The guy tried his best to put all the elements. He, he just got confused. He fell asleep. He saw all the elements fall into place. That's how not every dream is from God. Some of the, I, I read about some of the rock and rolls or, or some worldly songs that came in a dream and the lyrics are really bad, but it became such a hit but it came in a dream. Who do you think gave the dream? There are some horror novels. They are now classics. One famous one I can, I can tell you. Frankenstein. The whole thing came in a dream for the author. I don't know, is it from God or not? Huh? Even horror novels, famous ones, Okay, can come in a dream. I've had many dreams. Many of them don't come to pass. But there are some that set the road, even for this church. And it's from God. Amen. So, Pharaoh had a dream. Cows, like Einstein. 
Seven fat cows, 17 cows, you want to it. That means, I won't go into the, the dream itself because of time. I'll just say seven good years followed by seven bad years. Famine. Okay? And then, Joseph interpreted, your dreams are the same. He says that seven stalks of wheat and the, and the cows, it's all the same. It's seven years. Now, who would have thought that the cows represent seven years? The stalks of wheat, seven stalks of wheat, seven years. Who would have thought of that? Right? Then Joseph advised, at the end of it, he interpreted the dream. He advised Pharaoh. He says to Pharaoh, Now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. In Hebrew, a discerning and wise man, bin ve hakam. Hakam is from chokmah, is wisdom. But bin is actually, I'm going to give you the Greek right now. The Greek version of the Old Testament. Are you ready? We got a bit of Greek today, okay? It's the word sonetos. Find a, dis- find a man who is discerning. Someone who's, sonetos is the adjective of sonesis. Remember, Jesus had sinesis, putting two and two together. He says, find a man who can put two and two together. You see, you had the dream, but you don't know what to do with the dream. Now we have the interpretation, seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. But there's no instruction what to do. It takes some, he said, you, you find a man. He told Pharaoh, find a man who has this ability to put two and two together, a discerning and wise man. In the, in the, in the Greek, it has the word sunetos, which is the adjective of the word sunemis, su, uh, sunemi, put two and two together. What Jesus had when he was at the age of 12. Then Pharaoh said, and, and Pharaoh said, drop down, said to his servants, can we find such a one as this? A man in home is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Same thing in the Hebrew, bin ve hakam. But in the Greek, there's no one as sonetos as you. And he was promoted from being a slave all the way to the right hand of Pharaoh. Your boss is looking for someone with sunesis. Others see the facts. You know how to translate. Nowhere in Pharaoh's dream was there a man, a wise man, a discreet man. Nowhere in Pharaoh's dream. Joseph recommended someone, whether he positioned himself, I don't know. Wise men do that. He didn't say, "Uh, Pharaoh, I'm available. eh?" (laughs) Amen? He didn't do that. He said, Pharaoh, find a man who is able to put two and two together, sunesis, and and, and put that man in charge of this. He'll know what to do. So that was not in the dream. That was added. Why? He's able to see seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. He He see the need to save his family. He has a far-reaching goal. Amen. 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 May you have that as well, even for your preparation for your exam. Amen. Amen. An ability to step back and see the whole picture. Or you look at something, you're able to interpret. The news gives you the news. Someone as soon as he says, this is how I prepare myself. Amen. I'm not talking about investment, things like that. You got to be very, very careful. A lot of uh, people want your money. Okay? You make sure you operate in God's wisdom. The best investment is the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay? You see all the scams? Famous people. People, in, people high up there in financial human and all that can be deceived and they are involved in financial scam and not even know it for years. Every few years you hear, every some you know, period of years you hear someone coming up and someone who is not supposed to be deceived being deceived. Wisdom comes from God. Amen. And my time is up. Okay. Every head bowed, every eye closed all across this place. Father in heaven, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I'm going to pray for you that there be an impartation from God of tsunami. But remember this, you can pray also, but Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. 
The chapter before Joshua 1 8 is the chapter where Moses died. And it says this Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. Yet God told him he needed to meditate on the word. I said Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. Before Joshua 1, it tells us that. The last chapter of the previous book before Joshua 1, it says Joshua is full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid his hands on him. Yet, he had to spend time in the Word meditating. Now many of you have asked God for wisdom and I'll pray for you right now. But more than that, you need to meditate on the Word. Ask God for a Word that speaks to you. It must thrill you. It must speak to you. Then memorize it and then carry it with you throughout this week. Okay? And before that, if you are here today, my friend, Christ died on the cross for your sins. Christ rose again when you were acquitted in Him. The Bible says when you receive Jesus Christ, the very first thing that you receive is Christ is made unto us wisdom and then righteousness and then sanctification and finally redemption. Christ has made all this to us. You have no inheritance without Christ. Christ died for our sins. Christ rose again to always shepherd us. He's alive today. If you want to put your trust in Him, pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank You. Christ died for my sins and rose again. I confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and I believe in my heart. He's been raised from the dead. I'm saved. I'm now righteous by Jesus' blood. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, my friend, make your way to the welcome point or the connect points and tell them you prayed that prayer with me, okay? Stand to your feet, church. Lift your hands up to the Lord. The Bible says, if any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God, amen. In the name of Jesus, Father, you know the word, Lord, that you gave me to preach today. And you stand ready, Lord, to bestow, Lord, wisdom. You are more keen to bestow wisdom than we are to receive, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, especially, Lord, in the area of Sunesis, Lord, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you have blessed your people right now and impart to them everyone under the sound of my voice who wants it, Lord, an impartation of your Sophia wisdom, your Hakam wisdom, your Binah wisdom, and your Sunesis wisdom. An ability, Lord, to see what others don't see. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will also grant them Sakal for them to prosper, Lord, especially even throughout this week. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again.